I tried taking professional product photos using only my iPhone. Here's how it went. Okay, so you've probably seen a handful of videos on YouTube where professional, amateur, freelance, and all kinds of media creators show you how you can produce both videos and photos using only your iPhone. But the problem is that they don't use only their iPhone. Because out of nowhere, these same individuals are going to pull out a whole movie set of lights and filters and different equipment. So my goal today is to create a video in which I actually use only my iPhone and just the lighting that my house and the natural lighting provides to me. So why exactly am I doing this? Thanks for asking. There's two reasons. The first is that I see all these phone videography and photography challenges on YouTube and I always find myself thinking this can't be that hard, right? Right? <laughs> The second reason is that I figure that a ton of people, especially with the massive boom in media creation over the last few years, are looking for cheap and easy ways to professionally capture and create both content and photos. And I know that a lot of people are looking for the easiest ways and paths to do this. As the saying goes, work smarter, not harder. And I also figured, hey, I might as well try it out and be a great example of how exactly you could do it and just how easy it really is. So with that all being said, let's jump right into it and get this video started. So this is the spot of my house that I've decided to shoot this video in. Uh, the reason I picked this is because as you can see up here, there's actually a, a sunlight or it's called a sun win sunlight, sun window. I door so this right here will actually provide a really good bit of natural lighting from on top and you normally see you know product photographers using like a big overhead light and this is essentially that but it's the sun product that I am shooting today is um, lemon sparkling water quick disclaimer not in any way shape or form sponsored with uh, promoting them doing anything with them just you know entertainment stuff it's all for you guys so I'm just gonna kind of set up the area now and get you know things placed in the place that I want them to so that you know I get the product lighted properly oh god I looked right into the Sun so what I have here is um, a chair and I also have this black blanket that's uh, covered in in dog hair but basically I'm just gonna put the black blanket over top of the chair and this will kind of create a black backdrop Get a phone call. Can I just get those yeah, I think it should. So I now have it kind of nice and tight, no like you know noticeable wrinkles. Um, so now all I need to do is you know get my product and kind of some complimentary things here and there. So because it's lemon water, I have lemons that I'm gonna place here to complement it. I'll just kind of position these in a way that you know looks good and appealing to the viewer or the person who's looking at the photo. You know, I actually also just realized that uh, the lighting from the front here is really not good, so turning on, you know, different lights. So if you guys saw my last video, which wasn't, wasn't the greatest video, but I'm just going to spray the bottle and this will give it that really nice kind of condensation effect that makes the drink look really refreshing and cold and super appealing to someone who's just like sweating their balls off on a really warm summer day. My spray bottle even wants to work. There we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we are now back here in the camera, and as you can see, you could it's really visible that you can see all the kind of condensation on the bottle or the can. So I'm gonna bring the highlights and everything like that up in post editing, and then we're just gonna snap some photos. All right, so we have the photos, and I will now see you guys when we are in post editing. All right, so I'm just gonna keep this part nice, quick, simple, and easy for you guys because. But yeah, we're in Adobe Lightroom. We also have Photoshop. Yes, I know I said I'm only using my iPhone, but in order to actually edit this photo in a professional manner, we are going to need somewhat of a professional editing program. And with that being said, it, it is, is really cheap to, uh, you know, afford or buy these. They do really good monthly payments. I'm not too sure what they are, but I'll put them on screen right now. But anyways, I have the three photos that I've picked out as my favorite, kind of from a whole bunch that I took. As you can see, they have sort of different lighting. That was one of my main focus when I was actually taking the photos with my iPhone, was making sure that they weren't overexposed or out of focus. But I'm gonna use the third photo because this is my favorite one out of the bunch and it has the greatest lighting. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up the light tab and I'm going to turn the exposure up. Basically what the exposure does is it just kind of brings up the brightness of the whole photo essentially. Next up, we're just moving on to the contrast and all the contrast does is it just takes the darks from the photo and makes them darker and the lights from the photo makes them lighter and the grays and makes them grayer. Just kind of really well, 
contrast everything. We're gonna turn the highlights down so that anything that is of the lighter shade and it's kind of peaking, we're gonna just bring those peaks down and kind of blend them into the photo a lot better. You'll see that the gray rim around the can when I do this actually kind of starts to blend in with the can more. And likewise with the shadows, we're gonna do the complete opposite and turn them up and bring anything that's underexposed or too dark in the image, we're gonna bring it up, brighten it up and make it blend in to the whole photo better so that you can see the can in its full beautiful form. So now we're moving on to the color tab. We're gonna focus mainly on the blues and the yellows and we're just gonna bring up some of that saturation to make it look more alive and just make it pop more. Second to last tab we're gonna focus on is going to be the effects tab. The main thing we're gonna be focused on here is going to be the clarity and essentially all the clarity does is adds clarity, clears up the photo. It also sharpens up the photo a little bit, makes things more visible, readable. And I also find that sometimes it adds this really cool grungy type effect to the photo without actually being grungy. I, I don't know what I'm saying, but it, it, it's cool. The final tab we're gonna be working with is going to be the details tab. This is where we're just gonna turn up the sharpness and make sure that that photo is really popping and we're able to read all the small lettering that's on the can. And sometimes if you turn up the sharpness too much, you're gonna get a lot of graininess in your photo, especially if the photo is overexposed or too bright. Sometimes if it's too underexposed or too dark, you just really have to kind of find that sweet spot and that's where the noise reduction comes in. And basically noise reduction just gets rid of that graininess or that noise. Graininess is also just another other word for noise and yeah you just really have to find that sweet spot so now that we have all of our edits done we're gonna move this photo into Photoshop so we're just gonna go into the top left corner where it says file and click on edit in Photoshop first thing we're gonna do in Photoshop is unlock the layer that we just put in which is our can layer by clicking this little unlock symbol we're actually now gonna be able to do some edits on the photo next we're then gonna add a new layer which will become our background layer and all we're gonna do is select the rectangle tool make it a black rectangle and drag it over the whole entire scene or frame and this will become our black background don't worry about not being able to see it yet because we will be changing that. Now head over to the left toolbar and select the pen tool. You can also use the quick selection, the lasso tool, just whatever tool you want to use for masking out something, use it. But I like to use the pen tool because it's something that makes me work with a lot more precision. So now just take the time to make a really clean mask around the product. We're done with that we're going to right click on the mask and we're going to click make selection and then we're going to turn the feathering up to two pixels this is just going to allow the can to kind of blend in better with the background and it'll make it a lot smoother and it's not going to look as much of a hard cut mask next up we're just going to invert the mask and what we're going to do is make sure we have the top layer selected since we inverted the mask all we're going to do is just press the delete key and this will just delete the disgusting blanket background that we had for our photo we're now going to go to our can or product layer and we're going to click Control j and this will duplicate the layer. And then we're gonna go up top to where it says edit and go to transform and click flip vertically. We're then gonna position this upside down can directly beneath our old can. And then we're gonna make sure that our original can layer is on top of this flip layer. We're then going to reduce this flip layer's opacity and this will now become a really nice looking reflection. And we're now pretty much done. Um, yeah, you could add a lot more of your own effects to this. Um, this is just kind of really the basics of steps required to do this. There's a lot more room for expansion and you know your own creativity on top of these product photos. So you know, don't be scared to kind of push your creative limits with this. Obviously, it's the creative ones that are going to stand out. But this right here is kind of like a lot of the typical product photos that you're going to see, and a lot of people think that it's a lot harder to process than it is when it really isn't. But with that being said, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to subscribe and be sure to hit that like button because it helps me out more than you can imagine. With that all being said, I will see you guys in the next video that I make. Peace out.